Hello everybody, it's Aaron. Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Magmatic Engine. And what does that mean for us? It runs on lava as the name implies. Magma is in the name. I was thinking, what are we going to do with all this lava? We're going to hook it up to geothermal generators for EU. And we're going to put it in a Magmatic Engine for MJ. So we get to use the same fuel source for both types of energy. Before I get into this engine, I want to clear something up about the tank and the, the tank and the valve. Um, I was a little confused about this because I heard that you had to put the valve down here and then I put it up here just for the hell of it and it still made the tank. Well, here's the issue. This valve is only input. This valve is input and output. If you put a valve right here, it will also be input only. This is the only valve that will output on this tank besides the valve on the other side in the same place. So if the valve is at eye level, when you're standing on the same level that the tank is sitting on, that is the output and input. Any other valves above it are input only. So since we've cleared that up, the magmatic engine obviously runs on lava. You cannot use a lava cell or capsule or can to put lava in it. You can use a bucket of lava and you can use a waterproof pipe. Now this thing has no redstone around it whatsoever but it's gonna start up when I put the bucket of lava in there and I'll tell you why that is in just a second. This one's already hot so I mean it kinda sucks but you can you can see what's happening it's going to top out at about 1100 degrees and when it does the max power is 4 MJ per tick. So once this thing gets hot it runs really well. It's hooked up to the conductive pipe so it will generate 4 MJ forever as long as it has lava in it. That's awesome. It's never going to overheat. It's never going to blow up. It's never going to shut down unless you tell it to. They will do that in a certain circumstance, and I'll show you that in just a second. First, the reason this turned on is because you can set your own redstone stuff. So I can tell it, only turn on if you have a signal, turn on if you don't have a signal, or disable it altogether, in which case I believe it just runs as long as it has lava in it. And I'm taking a guess. Right now it says 760 or 755 out of 4,000 MB. I'm thinking that means millibuckets because four buckets will fit in here. That's just a guess. I don't know about that. So there it is. 4 MJ per tick as long as there's lava in it and it's hot. Hooked up to conductive pipe. Never overheats, never explodes, never shuts down. Nothing to worry about. What do I want to use this for? Everything, everything that takes buildcraft power, guess what? It's getting a magmatic engine. Or I'm going to have a bank of them and we're going to have a ton of power. I also want to use it for a quarry. How do we get the lava from here or the nether to the quarry? Basically the same way we get it here. And I'll get into that as soon as I show you how these things will overheat. So I have one set up in the nether on the pump and it's actually overheated already. So if it does overheat, a quote from the wiki, you whack with a crescent hammer or other build craft compatible wrench like this. So I want you to look at the energy stored here. It's just climbing and it's just it just keeps going up. The heat is not the issue because the thing runs on lava. I mean it's you know it's heat is going to be there. If you look at either of these engines, the energy goes up to about 80 and then it drops back down because it's getting pulled out by the conductive pipe, which is why these engines will run at this speed generating this much energy forever as long as they have lava. This one, as soon as it hits 10,000, it's going to shut down, it's going to smoke a little bit, and then it's going to sit there. It has to wait. Well, it doesn't have to wait. You can restart it before all this energy dissipates, but it's just going to heat up very quickly. You know, I just started the thing up and it's already about to shut down. So that is the basic of the, mag of the magmatic engine. 
if if that's all you're interested in you can stop watching right now because now I'm going to show you how I have lava going to the quarry in the mining age so basically you know how this has the interface where it'll top it off which basically tells you if it's full um, you know wait until it's full to send the card on or give it what you can and send it on well I have kind of the same thing happening the cart's going to fill up here in the nether it's going to go to my mining age which is through this portal and it's going to hit this unloader which by the way you can unload liquid on three sides of it the bottom and each side so this thing I don't have empty checked if I click that then it's going to hold the cart until it empties the cart well these things don't use all that much lava so I mean they're full the cart comes through here so often that this thing stays pretty full I mean you can still see you know liquid in the tank so the cart if we have empty checked it's gonna sit here for a long time until these things use as enough lava to empty out you know the cart and then then it'll finally go so we don't want to do that if we uncheck that basically it'll give the unloader whatever it can take and then the unloader will send it on its way so then it comes over here and it's gonna to totally drain it because that's what I want it to do this one I don't remember what it's set to it's set to empty right now it doesn't really matter because there's plenty of room you know I'm pumping from tank to tank to tank just because I didn't feel like tearing it down or rebuilding it so basically I want the cart to fill up in the nether it's going to go to the mining age and top off that that uh, pipe system then it's going to come here and give this thing the rest of the lava um, and you can you know I'm sure you can make a valve that when the tank is full you can switch a track and divert it and send the cart other directions but uh, this is a basic thing and we're not going to get into that just yet uh, when I do it in the LP world probably going to be a different story the best thing about this engine is that it's cheap it only takes 10 gears and one of these transmission coil things which is for pretty cheap too so as cheap as they are as much as they generate um, it's pretty awesome so back to the mining world very quickly the way I have this set up over here the unloader takes it these engines get it and they're gonna run forever generating 4 MJ per tick even after the quarry finishes they're never going to blow up they're never going to overheat they're never going to shut down we don't have to worry about a thing uh, unless a creeper blows up or something so it's very refreshing to not have to worry about a combustion engine blowing up because uh, the water was just out of the boundaries of the chunk that's loaded and the infinite pool dried up so you don't have to worry about these blowing up taking your quarry with it and losing any kind of fuel because obvi obviously we have a ton of lava and even if these are still full it's no big deal to break them I mean it's only four buckets anyway even if we were you know worried about it so the way this goes the quarry sends everything down here obviously everything I don't want goes into the void pipe everything else goes into the ender chest and then it gets pulled out with a wooden transport pipe and a redstone engine in the overworld it's conceivable to extend this pipe a little bit and run another quarry over here with a few more engines and then either put another ender chest on this side or just use some transport pipe since cobblestone transport pipe is pretty cheap um, you can just run it all over here use one ender chest and only have to use one void pipe and one diamond pipe so that's the basic gist of how I have this set up and this is how I'm probably going to do it um, once the red power update hits so that's the that's the basics of the magmatic engine and how I'm going to use it to power a quarry and everything else um, so keep in mind as long as it's hooked up to conductive pipe you don't have to worry about it overheating if you're running it on a pump it's probably going to overheat I would use redstone engines instead because they do just as good of a job once they get heated up like that so 
I still want to mess around with boilers and steam engines. I think I'm going to start playing with those next and figure that out. If I figure it out well enough, I'll do a tutorial. If you want to see anything else, let me know and um, I'll do the research and figure it out because I'm, I'm in one of those moods. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. If you want to see a tutorial about something, leave a comment. And that's it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.